Hello students, in today's class we are going to study e-governance. Okay, so let us see what is e-governance. E-governance stands for electronic governance. It is related to the government. It signifies the implementation of information technology in government processes and functions. So now, whenever we have to deal with some kind of government processes and functions, we can use e-governance. Government is making use of information technology so that they can help citizens. The basic purpose of e-governance is to simplify processes for all. They have want to simplify the process for everybody, for the government, for the citizens, for the business people and anyone. And this is going to work at different levels, at national level, state level and at local level. So at all these three levels, we will see different, different websites which are formed by the government so that people can benefit from that. E-governance delivers smart government. So this statement is very important. You must remember this statement. Now the word smart, what does it stand for? Smart stands for simple, moral, accessible, responsive and transparent. So when we are talking about e-governance, e-governance incorporates all these different properties. E-governance is simple because Nowadays, everybody is carrying smartphone and they can access it easily. Moral, as there will be transparency, transparency in the system, morally people will not be doing anything wrong. Accessible, internet these days has been available to everybody. So it is easily accessible by anyone. Responsive. Now when we are raising a request, the government is responding to that particular to that particular respect uh, sorry to that particular request immediately transparent as all the documents are linked these days and we can also see the documents which are available on the web we can see the how the process is moving of our request so everything has become transparent <laughs> so what are the different advantages First advantage, reduced corruption. Since everything is going to happen online, nobody is going to move to the offices, nobody is going to meet person in physical. So, they are going to reduce the corruption. Second point, high transparency. Aadhaar cards, PAN cards, bank accounts, every detail of an individual is linked. So there is a transparency in everybody's account. Even whatever task is being done, let's take I have made a request. I can easily track on which state my request is pending. What are the differences? What are the requirements? So there is a transparency in the system. Okay? We can clearly get to know what is happening with our documents after our request. Increased convenience. We don't have to travel from one place to another. We don't have to meet people. There are no people telling us, go to this particular department, go to that department. So there is a convenience which is increased. Next point, direct participation of the constituents. Now here, directly the government is participating in the request. They are Taking care of the request and giving us the result. Next point, reduction in overall cost. Since it is working online, so there are less number of people who are doing manual work. And also we don't have to file in any papers, any Xeroxes. So again, this is going to reduce our cost. Also, we don't have to travel to a place. So all these features are reducing the cost. Last point, expanded reach of government. Now, with online, even the person sitting in any corner, they can reach out to the government. 
otherwise it was very difficult for people living in remote places to get to an office to get to these particular facilities to get a pan card to get aadhar card it was difficult for them now they can reach out to the government very easily now after the advantages let us see the different types of e governance now e governance it is divided into four types depending on the types of services the first one government to citizen g to state next one government to government g to g next one government to business g to b and the last one government to employee g to e okay so these are the four different types depending on their services if you will notice here the first one has government and citizen so the participants over here in this particular category will be a government and a citizen okay so these are the participants which are going to be in this particular type of service let us see each one of them individually first one government to citizen here one of the citizen is requesting some uh, kind of a document from the government let's take for example i want my pan card so for that firstly i will fill in an online application so this is possible because government is providing these days these kind of websites and making our work very very easy we don't have to go physically to the part of bank card office and it can be done sitting at our places this type prefers to government services which enable citizens to get access to wide variety of public services you name any different public services they are available to a citizen by the government next one most of the government services fall under g to c as mostly these are the two participants in the given take relationship they are most of the services are in this category it helps the ordinary people to reduce the time and cost to conduct transactions now here we don't have to go to any office we are sitting at home so if i say that i have filled a form they'll give me an id after few days i can check my status and once that status is going to show me completed that means my work is done so we don't um, have to invest our time we don't have to invest our money in this type of service a citizen can have access to services anytime from anywhere so this is a very very big advantage which internet is providing us you can use the service anytime if i want to fill an application for my pan card i can do it anytime Okay, so there is no restriction that the office is open from ten to five, so I can go in that time. Nothing like that. Sitting at your homes anytime with your convenience, you can fill in the application. Many services like license renewal, paying tax are essential in G to C. So these are the two different services which fall in this category. So Aadhar card, changing of the addresses on Aadhar card. Uh, your pan cards your first when you are filling your passport form all these type of services are available in g2c it focuses on geographical land barrier now geographically we uh, it is not creating any barrier there is no physical office so you can do the entire process at different places now let's take for example i am filling a form over here in pune and later on when i come to know that there is a next step where i have to upload the document that uploading can be done at a different place also maybe in delhi if i am in delhi then i can do the uploading at that that place also so no geographical land barriers are over here so this is about your government to city the next one is government to business now many a times business people they also need some kind of forms to be filled they need some kind of certificates they need some kind of assurance yes the process is going correct 
the government issues certificates to business people that they are doing the correct thing or the norms which are being followed are correct or not so in this case government to business is very helpful the g2b is exchange of services between government and business organizations so here the participants are the government and business g2b provides access to relevant forms needed to comply there are some forms which a government wants the business people should fill in and they should be doing it timely they should be telling what are the profits how much is the profit and other relevant details the g2b also consists of many services exchange between business sector and government so apart from these forms there are various things that the business person has to uh, get it done from the government so they all fall in this category it aims at eliminating paperwork saving time cost and establishes transparency in business environment while interacting with the government now here there is no paperwork everything is working online on your laptops on your desktops on the machine so paperwork is not needed again it saves your time you don't have to go to office from one person to another taking your file so saving time cost is also saved and it establishes transparency that means it is creating between different organizations it is telling what is being done and what the other business people are doing okay so they are creating a transparency here if you will see the reduced corruption point very well fits it as the people are not going uh, physically to meet and they are doing online so over here also you will see that they are reducing the the next type is government to government in this both the participating people are different organizations or different departments of the government the g2c refers to interaction between different government departments organizations or agencies so there is one department of the government which is interacting with another department okay so then this category is for them now let's take for example there is some maintenance work going on in the neighborhood for some road and all in that case a government personnel who is in charge for the roads is going to communicate the same with the government person which is in charge for the waters and pipelines because as they are going to dig in they have to see the pipelines also even for electricity also so they have to inform all the different governments and this can be done using g2g in g2g government agencies can share the same database using online communication now there is one database each and every organize each and every department of the government can access the same database using online communication different departments can work together many a times they have to work together they have things which are in parallel to each other and this will help them g2g services can be at local level or at international level so local level we also already seen an example at international level like if a person is traveling from here to say dubai then the um, then the person the government person which are posted over there they have to communicate in india about the details it provides safe and secure interrelationship between domestic and foreign government so um, this government to government is going to help interrelationships between domestic and foreign government also they can share their details anytime required this is about government to government now let's see the last slide the last one is government to employee g2e here one of the participant is government the second participant is employee in the government sector the g2e is integral part of g2g sector now you can assume that it is working inside that sector itself g2e aims to bring employees together and improvise knowledge sharing if there are some kind of training internal trainings which a government needs to organize for the employees they can make use of g2e provides online facilities to all employees 
like applying for leave, reviewing salary payment record, checking balance of holiday. So these government employees basically are given an ID password where they can log into the government site and check for their status. The G2E sector provides human resource training and development. So they are going to provide training to their employees.